viruses. The arch nemesis of humanity sits its very inception. From it making you seriously ill to deleting your pawn collection, viruses have always been mankind's bane. But while us gamers have been relatively unscathed when it comes to these infectious ignoramuses, well, unless you've been pirating stuff, some have actually fallen through the cracks without our knowledge. Now, when I say gaming viruses, I'm not talking about infections like the T-Virus in Resident Evil or the Cordyceps virus in The Last of Us, but bona fide fudge your computer up viruses. So this episode, I reveal these PC pathogens, these software sicknesses, and these microcomputer microorganisms. Well, right, I'm stretching it a bit with that one. As I say, but hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five games you never knew contained actual virus. We'll start this episode off with something you might not be expecting. A console game with a virus. Now you're probably thinking, consoles can't get viruses Larry you handsome sexy man you. And you'd be right, on both parts. However, what Sega loved to do with their CD based games at the time was bundle a load of desktop wallpapers for your computer if you put the disc in your PC. The Japanese Dreamcast game, Atelier Marie and Ellie, came with a free screensaver for your computer, which, if installed, would infect your machine with the Christ virus. A right nasty little bugger at the time, who would not only wipe your BIOS, but also infect random files if you attempted to put the hard drive into another PC. How it got onto the disc is up to speculation, but at an educated guess, the game was developed on an infected machine, which in turn spread to the gold copy while it was being burned. The developers, Cool Kids, were deeply apologetic and offered a full recall. Though unfortunately, there still are a few infected copies floating out there, so buyer, beware. On the plus side, this virus is well over 20 years old now, so if you were stupid enough to put the game into your computer, all modern antiviruses would detect it within seconds. But if this was 1999, you could kiss your PC goodbye. This box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play a game? Well, hopefully not this one, as MGM Interactive Strategy Game, based on everyone's favourite Matthew Broderick movie that isn't Ferris Bueller, is rife with computer damaging software. The age old method of, if you want to rip off a popular video game, slap a licence over the top and no one will notice is exactly the tactic what MGM did to disguise the fact they were making a Command & Conquer knockoff back in 1998. Unfortunately, all their development time went into plagiarising and not bothering to check if they had any viruses on the disc. You see, War Games is infected with a Marburg virus, which despite being named after a deadly human virus spread by monkeys, is actually a devious little worm that wipes the database of antivirus programs to avoid detection then affects EXE and screensaver files, flooding the screen with red X's. MGM were obviously embarrassed when websites began reporting this issue and emailed everyone who registered the game a virus free copy, as well as a free copy of Norton Antivirus. As a side note, MGM weren't the only culprits lazy enough not to check their software. The July 1998 cover disc of PC Gamer magazine also contained the Marburg virus which, ironically, is probably where MGM got it from. Bloody games journalism corrupts everything. Haha, oh! <laughs> <laughs> you remember Minecraft, don't you? It was that hip virtual Lego building game all the kiddies played before Fortnite existed, as well as people now in their early 30s who have carved themselves creatively unescapable Let's Play channels focused on it. While it's been released on virtually every system imaginable, the PC version of everyone's favourite software spelunker is by far the most customisable, and that's unfortunately where the problems arise. 
Back in April 2018, nearly 50,000 computers were infected with a malware virus by anyone who downloaded skins from the official Minecraft domain. It appeared as a simple PNG file when downloaded, but when opened would reformat the entire hard drive, while also erasing any backup files on other connected drives. Worst of all, if your antivirus failed to catch it, only a total reinstall of Windows would completely remove the malware. As horrific as a malware sounds, shockingly it was an amateurish attempt created from online tutorials on how to create viruses using Notepad. So it's amazing something so simple could have slipped under both Microsoft and Mojang's radar. Thankfully, Mo Yang issued a patch that removed all unnecessary information from PNG files intended for the game. So younglings can now ignore the fact they once got skins for free in games and rather pay exorbitant prices for them in Fortnite nowadays instead. Of course, I still need to fill up my completely obscure game no one has ever heard of quota. And this episode's entry is the 2009 bullet hell shoot 'em up Tohu Sorensen, or Unidentified Fantastic Object for you English speaking fellows. Now, this is an interesting tale of malware that was originally intended to be a joke, but ended up getting completely out of hand. One slow evening, a South Korean undergrad decided to create the malware Rensenware out of sheer boredom. What this program does is essentially ransomware, except in this case it locks all the software on your PC until you score over 20 million points on Tohu Sorensen's lunatic difficulty mode. Something borderline impossible on the game's easy setting, let alone its hardest difficulty. So we uploaded it to GitHub as a laugh, then went to bed. When he woke up, he discovered he had infected countless computers to the point he even managed to infect himself. Even funnier was he was nowhere near skilled enough at the game to unlock the damage he had done. Luckily our Korean prankster had another PC and immediately created a program to neutralise ransomware's effects and uploaded it to GitHub with an apology. But having to score 0.2 billion points in a rock hard game to unlock your computer eh? <laughs> Good job Darkseid Phil never got infected, <laughs> we'd never hear from him again. Then again, Thank you, you fucking worthless humans, for the views. Oh! I'm saving this one until last, mainly because while the other viruses on this list are mostly likely included in the game by accident or innocently for t lols this final entry is purely out of malice. Now, we're all aware of the neurotic levels some publishers go to combat piracy, often to the detriment of totally legitimate customers. Things like only being allowed to install a game thrice, constantly having to revalidate your purchase every few days, and most infamous of all, always online digital rights management, or DRM. Thankfully, no one has ever been stupid enough to use malware as copy protection. Well, that was, until Flight Sim Labs reared their ugly heads. They may be an unfamiliar publisher for a lot of you, but Flight Sim Labs develop a lot of plane models for Microsoft's Flight Simulator. So, with such a niche clientele, you can tell that some of their models are pretty expensive. Triple digit figures a lot of the time. So you can imagine some people aren't too happy spending large sums for what is essentially a glorified skin. So to combat this, Flight Sims Lab did something, well, ultra scummy. They disguised malware as DRM in a $100 play model, which infected every single user's computer with it. What did this malware do? Well, it took the user's name and passwords logged into Google Chrome, giving Flight Sims Lab access to any website associated with said user. Now, you're probably thinking, oh boo hoo, pirates got what they deserved. However, despite being highly illegal already, there's no stopping the company from accessing a user's details whether they legitimately bought the model or not. Of course, Flight Sims claim they didn't, but the damage had been done. The backlash was immense. Flight Sims tried to backtrack on the malware, removing it in a patch, but replacing it with a bug that faked admin privileges on a Windows PC, 
inserting code that now crashed the game for anyone with an illegitimate copy. Also highly illegal. So, as you can imagine, the backlash got even worse. How did Flight Sims Lab address this situation? Did they remove the patch and make the model DRM free? Did they come clean and apologise? <laughs> no! That's nowhere near juicy enough for a fact hunt episode. No, they decided to threaten legal action against Reddit and multiple Microsoft Flight Sim forums, inciting libel against anyone who left negative comments about their software and their company. <laughs> now this is where the story blows completely out of proportion. Tired of their computers being hacked for private information and forced censorship, one Reddit user decided enough was enough and hacked Flight Sim Lab's website, posting an open letter to the company on a main page and doxing the heads and employees. Flight Sim Labs twisted this attack to be one on their customers' private information, which is ironic considering them doing that exact same thing was what started this whole debacle. While Reddit condoned the attack, there was no actual evidence on a hack ever happening, with speculation that Flight Sim Labs themselves orchestrated the whole attack for sympathy. So, with the whole ordeal getting out of hand, Flight Sim Labs took to damage control, admitting they had inserted malware into the software, but claiming it was solely to search for one specific pirate. Though, how they would recognise one cracker from information obtained by all of their customers is anyone's guess. And this is really where the drama peters out. While the software no longer contains malware, as of the making of this video, it still contains the Windows admin hacking code. But the whole final sting in this tale is Flight Sim Lab's website is encoded in poorly programmed Base64 software. So it's only by absolute pure luck no legitimate hackers stole the code they themselves had illegally obtained. What a completely messed up story. Kinda puts loot boxes into perspective, <laughs> doesn't it? Hello you! Thanks ever so much for watching! Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified, and be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon! But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time! Ta-ra for now!